Hey guys, this is Tim from Tim's Electronics Lab and welcome back to a new video. Now in this video we're hopefully going to repair this Philips wake up light. It's a light that supposedly wakes you up better. This light simulates the sun when waking you up. You set a timer and then it wakes you up gradually by increasing the light output. Now this can also be used as a night light. It has these buttons on the, the bezel, the, the top bezel that allows you to activate the light and control the brightness and set the radio and control the volume and most importantly activate the alarms and the snooze button is on the side here, very smart so there are also these buttons at the front and uh, these allow you to actually select the time and such but the problem is that these buttons on the top they don't work and I've managed to get them to work once and that was by activating the night light and I did that accidentally whilst I was laying in my bed and I couldn't turn it off my guess is that all of these buttons are in parallel or you know, they're on the same line that goes to the uh, microcontroller inside of this thing. So none of the buttons work. Uh, and the rest of the unit works fine actually. So it's only the buttons that are uh, not working properly. So my guess is that when we take this apart, we can repair these buttons fairly easily. So let's actually do that right now. Let's unplug this thing. Wait for it to... there you go discharge now as far as I can see there's a single screw over here that we need to undo and then we should be able to open everything up I'm not sure Ooh, what was that I'm not sure so let's unscrew that screw and let's see what we get so just a regular Phillips screw no pun intended so this unit was thrown away and I managed to save it actually my girlfriend managed to save it so does this come off now yeah it does there we go I do see programming headers for the actual microcontrollers I can see the I squared C lines I can see the voltage lines and they're kindly enough they've labeled them all so that's really really useful and I can also see the buzzer that's below this thing alright so oh there's a screw inside of this thing over here so let's remove that my trusty old rubber screwdriver is broken I'll need to use this one I'm guessing that this has to come out somehow one way or another Like so. Oh, there you go. Oh, screws. Nice, 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 nice. More screws. More screws is more better. And all the screws appear to be the same, which is obviously cheap for the manufacturer, but also quite handy for us since we don't have to bother remembering where each screw goes. And what now? Oh, yeah, there you go. Here we go. So that's the the button uh, bezel. Oh no, they're using these really tiny buttons. Well, that's unfortunate. Let's actually proceed by removing all the other screws. All right. So I guess that we can. Take off the front now, which is correct. We need to be careful with this. This is foil. We don't want to break it. It's the fusion foil. I guess that we need to undo these screws. And then we can separate the front from the back. And uh, these are different screws than the all the other screws. So alright, so I'm assuming that we can separate it even further now yeah there you go so can we lift this up 
it looks like it. Because we really do need to get to the actual wiring of the buttons. So it looks like we can separate this by doing that. There you go. Whoa! Check out the heatsink they've used. That's really big. I wasn't expecting that to be in here. Sorry for the camera angle. There's a plug inside of here. And we need to disconnect. That worked. It worked wonderfully actually. And then there's another plug and I'm not sure where that goes to. This plug slides in from the side. Sorry, I'm not able to get this on camera. It's actually quite hard to do this. There you go. So this plug plugs in from the side and then you can remove the light module. Oh, there are clips that we need to remove. So you can see the clip over here. I'm just going to try and push down on it. I don't think that that will work. Oh, we can see the wiring of the buttons. There are three connectors, two connectors. Two going to the wiring. And one over there. And one over there. So I'm going... They're both not working. I was expecting this to be one strand of wiring and not two. My guess is that they're using a resistive measurement method to see what button got pressed and what button didn't got pressed and that one of the buttons is not really working anymore and that that causes the whole strands to basically stop functioning or the wires are causing too much of a resistance increase the solid joints we are able to see a resistor on the back of this unit and let's measure the resistance on the connector So they are showing nothing. I need to insert something into the so zero ohms, or actually open circuit, not zero ohms. And let's try and get the multimeter to attach to it. So this is working. I can see that the multimeter changes its reading when we press a button. All right, so let's do the same trick for the other button set. All the buttons are working so this is going to be a hard one i was expecting the buttons just to be trash but they aren't they are actually working that's one and that's two hey that's one big self that oh, i can just use the speaker to store the screws really nice Let's loosen this ring so we can feed in more of the antenna wiring. We can also just disconnect the speaker. There you go. Alright, so this board is responsible for the buttons. And I can already see something ugly over here. There's a capacitor that's on the verge of getting disconnected. Yeah, I I think I can already see a cold solder joint. Well, that's the main disadvantage of using a resistive button um, push detection method, however you want to call it. When something goes out of spec, even the slightest bit, it could be that nothing is working all of a sudden. So let's proceed by removing these screws. So this capacitor is part of the circuitry. I think that's my best bet, just to reflow some of the components that are over there and then 
try again. Yeah, so let's just desolder this, resolder this thing. I think I'll be using hot air. There you go. Let's set it at 370, which is perfect. A little bit less air. Looks like I'm scoring PCB. Which is quite interesting. Let's use a Q-tip to clean some of the garbage off. Yeah, we've got a disconnected capacitor. This capacitor is loose. And uh, my feeling is that this capacitor uh, is of that the two lines are combined into a single line and that that capacitor is causing something not to work presumably a ground reference or something because it's connected very close to the ground so I'm going to give this side a reflow and then we're going to actually measure if they are the same line So now let's measure the continuity between both sides. So this side and this side. There's a 10k difference between. Oh. Oh, that's the ground. Oh yeah. So between here and here, there's a 20k difference between both lines. So uh, yeah, they're the same. How big is this resistor? 10k. How big is this resistor? 10k, so from here to here. Yeah. There you go, bingo, found it. It's the same line, it's confirmed. So this via goes to the other side of this resistor. And we only need to find where that goes to right now. And then we presumably have entrance of the through this resistor into the microcontroller so this resistor is part of the measurement circuitry and that's 10k i actually want to know what happens if we push a button because that should result in a measurement change yeah it jumps down by quite a bit so that's good so this is working this side of the string now let's test out this side of the string. Yeah, this is also causing a change. So both are causing a change now. Which is good. So let's actually just connect the PCBs back together and let's power it up. So let's screw in two screws just to be sure that the PCB doesn't fall out. I do want to test out the light, so I'm going to connect the light. So let's grab the 12 volt plug. Let's insert it into the back of the module. This should be the button for the light. There you go. So it's working again. Not sure what caused the issue. But as you're able to see, the light is working. So let's actually unplug it before we cause any damage. There you go. So, wow, that's wonderful news actually. So let's put this thing back together and we'll see if it still works. So these are self tappers. So just be careful when inserting them. Now comes the hard part, which is to actually uh, install the light. And the hard part being that we need to connect this connector in a very, very awkward angle. 
Now we need to do this with the thing removed. There we go. Why is this loose again? Oh, I forgot to tighten one screw. Good that I'm taking it apart again. Connect the three pin connector. Then insert the light into its position. And then ooh, connect the four pin connector at the side. And now we can reinstall these self tappers. So again, please be aware, these are self tappers. So make sure to do the undo until you feel them physically click into place. And now I'm going to clean this screen because otherwise it will look ugly from the outside. Now this needs to go on. Oh no, there are uh, screws around the edge of the thing before this goes on. So these are not self tappers, so they just should go in. So let's install the bezel. Let's do it the correct way, obviously. Now let's install the two screws that belong in here. Oh no, I needed to install the front cover before installing all these screws. There you go, that's better, that's the front installed. Now let's install this ring again. And let's tighten these screws. And we can install this piece. There you go. And finally we can install the label and screw that in place. And we should have a working light. What time is it? It's 13.04. If we press the light button. There you go. Even the radio is working. So guys, thanks a lot for watching this video. I hope you find this video useful. If you did, please don't forget to leave me a big thumbs up. And please let me know in the comments down below if you've fixed your own wake up light. So again, thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye. Oh, hey, hello. Uh, I, I wasn't expecting you over here. Well, if you want, you can also view two other videos of me. So make sure to click them and don't forget to subscribe and like so you always get notified of my new videos.